What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco, and today we're going to be going into uh, a new a new series that I'm considering doing, where I just kind of go through different apps and copycat some of their uh, feature sets. And today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go over how to copycat Instagram's double uh, double tap to like. Uh, feature so uh, essentially we have this list of photos right here and what I want to do is when I double tap on one of these images I want to have that heart icon pop up and then kind of have like some type of little indication that um, you know that that this image was liked by the user so we're gonna go over that but before we go over that I just want to say make sure you check out kiloloco.com and um, you know check out the courses that I have as well as the all access membership which gives you you know the ability to reach out to me through slack and we can um, you know discuss any problems that you might have so with that being said let's jump into the project and let's see where where we're at and let me just show you what this uh, what the end product kind of looks like real quick and as you can see we just have the images and if we double tap you're gonna see that the animation kind of comes up and then also that the little like icon right there is gonna happen so if we were to double tap on any of these pictures you're gonna get the animation as well as an indicator saying that it's liked so as you can see this is already set up if you want the starter project link is in the description you can download the starter project and the finished project for free and as you can see with our storyboards we're just we're just gonna do this in storyboards so that you know it's easier to go through and do it a little bit quicker and um, all we have is all this stuff is um, embedded in a navigation controller we've got our image view that's showing the image we have a little heart icon down here that is just going to be an indication saying that we did like this photo and then um, all this is in a table view cell now if we go ahead and take a look at our photos view controller this is a UI table view controller I have a list of photos that were displaying which are the, which are the ones that you saw in the simulator and then nothing too crazy right here for the um, table view delegates and data source right so let's jump over into the photo cell because this is actually where we, we need to do some of the implementations now we're gonna actually create a separate class that's going to handle the animation and then we're gonna um, we're gonna have a, a instance of that class here in the table view cell so the first thing that I want to do is I'm gonna create um, a like animator class so let's do that now All right, so now that we have the like animator class, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take in two arguments inside of our initializer. We're gonna take in the container, whatever um, whatever view is actually gonna be holding this animated image view, and then um, the constraint that we plan on actually animating where we're gonna make it big and then we're gonna make it small and gives us that like effect. So let's go ahead and create an initializer right now. All right, so now that we have our like animator has its initializer, we can get all these things set up. As you can see, we just have our container being passed in, and then we have the layout constraint being passed in, whichever one we plan on animating. Next, what we want to do, we want to create an animate function, and this animate function is going to have all the logic that's going to make our heart icon kind of give it that bouncing effect that you usually see on Instagram. It also needs to have a completion handler because we need to um, be able to send, hey, we need to be able to say, hey, you know what? The like animation has finished. You can run some code after that. So that will be what we're gonna be using um, in order to make sure that this little heart icon right here, which is currently hidden, as you can see, it's hidden. We're gonna make sure that we are able to set that to, um, you know, visible once the animation has finished. So let's go ahead and create that function now. All right, so as you can see, all I did was um, I added in this animate function, and what we're doing is we're setting up the layout constraint to make sure that the lay, um, that we're gonna set that constraint to a 100. Um, I mean, you could obviously you know change that number to whatever you see as fit, but I'm gonna choose 100, makes it a pretty good size heart. And then uh, the UI view dot animate, uh, what this is going to do is this is actually going to give us the ability to animate um, the constraint itself so as you can see I have these different numbers in here so how long is it gonna last the duration it's gonna last 0 0.7 seconds uh, the delay we want it to start immediately so we set it to zero 
the spring dampening and the velocity. I've played around with the animation and you'll see that it does look pretty close to how um, Instagram has theirs. So um, you can obviously play around with these numbers and try to get a different like effect. But um, what I found is 0 0.5 for the dampening and two for the velocity are um, very close to Instagram. And then for the options, we're gonna set it to dot curve linear. Now, if you're confused about any of this animation information, I have a video that talks about um, you know animating uh, or doing some animations. Uh, I'll put that link um, up there where the little eye is at. And then uh, lastly, we have the animations that we want to perform and then the completion. So we're just going to press enter on both of these and that's going to actually give us two blocks um, which we're going to uh, two blocks which we're going to use to say this is what I want to happen when we uh, do the animation and this is what I want to happen after the animation has completed. So the only thing that we want to do right here in the actual animation is since we're actually setting the constraint up here is we just need to say self.container dot layout if needed like so now remember that we're in a closure so we do need a reference self and since we want to follow like better practices we'll just make sure that this is weak self so we'll say weak self in and then self dot container layout if needed and that will allow this um, constraint to actually animate as we want it to now down here we're going to do essentially the same exact thing we want to make sure that we're going to be using weak self and then we're not going to be using um, the the argument that's being passed in here. All we want to do is we would just want to um, so so if this one's making the heart expand to be a full heart, we want to shrink that heart back down to zero. So all we're going to do is we're going to do essentially the reverse of all this right here. So let's go ahead and add that in right now. All right, so as you can see, we all we did was we just wanted to make sure that this constraint is going back to zero. We're gonna make sure that it disappears, um, that the heart ends up disappearing, but we don't want that to be immediate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another UI view dot animate, and we're gonna set it to 0 0.3 seconds. That's what I found seems to be uh, pretty close to the Instagram um, animation. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that it doesn't just disappear to zero immediately. We want it to happen over time. So it's going to sh shrink down in 0 0.3 seconds, which gives it a visual effect of shrinking. And then we want to make sure that we lay out if needed on the container so that it's actually doing uh, the it's actually animating this constraint right here. And then lastly, we're just calling completion. So the completion is essentially what we're gonna end up working with wherever we're calling this animate block that is going to allow us to run some type of code, whatever we wanna do after this animation has completely completed. <laughs> completely completed. All right, so let's go back over to our photo cell and we have essentially our like animator all finished up and we need an instance of this like animator inside of our photo cell. But if we were to take a look at our like animator to initialize it, what we wanna do is we wanna have a container for our cell, it's gonna be our content view. But we don't currently have a layout constraint uh, to animate just yet. So what we wanna do is we wanna go back over to our storyboards and we want to add in the actual image view where the um, the animated like heart is um, going to be right here in the center. So let's go ahead and start doing that. I'm going to zoom into our photo cell. I'm going to grab an image view right here from the library. And we're going to just drop it into the center. Now, um, what I want to do is this image view needs to have a width and a height of zero at first but just so that it's a little bit easier to work with while I add the constraints in, I'm gonna set the width to 100 and then make sure that you hit aspect ratio. You don't wanna have a height constraint. We want this to be a perfect square. So we're gonna set the width to 100, set aspect ratio, and then we're gonna make sure that it's still selected. We're gonna go over here to the size um, inspector. And what we'll do is we're gonna first, first we're gonna change the uh, aspect ratio from 15 to eight to one to one so we're just going to type in one i think that'll work and then we need to also while the image view is still selected we need to make sure that it's centered inside of our um inside of our 
other image view. So we'll make sure that it's centered. So we're going to say horizontally in container, vertically in container. I'm going to add both of those. And as you can see, it's a perfect square now. So now what I want to do is remember, we only have the width constraint and then the height constraint is essentially set through the aspect ratio. So I'm going to make sure that I have access to the width constraint, this one right here. And I'm going to add that into my cell. So let's go ahead and open up the assistant editor. I'm going to close this and make sure we're on the table view. We're not, or on the cell. So let's go ahead and make sure that we get to the cell. I'm going to go to recent files. Uh, let's see, photo cell. That's the one that I want. And what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure that we have an outlet for that width. So let's do it like this. So there's no mistakes made and we'll just call this um, heart or we'll say like um, image view with constraint. <laughs> Super long name, right? But at least it's very descriptive, right? So uh, I didn't mean to do that. I pressed delete. Hold on. All right, sorry, I pressed delete and something weird happened. All right, so now that we have the like image view with constraint um, accessible, we'll actually be able to animate it inside of our like animator class. So let's go ahead and go back to the regular um, view. We're gonna go into our photo sale. And what we wanna do is we wanna create an instance of our like animator. Now I'm gonna use a lazy um, variable for our like animator just so that we can have it up here at the top and we can initialize it um, by using the content view and the like image view with constraint um, without having to do it anywhere else in like the awake from nib or whatever. All right, so now that we have an instance of our like animator, we're almost there, we're almost there. There's still a couple of things that we need to do. Um, let's go back over to our main.storyboard and remember that we want this to start off at zero because you don't just have a heart just laid out on top of every um, image view or on top of every image when you're scrolling through Instagram, right? What you want is you actually want uh, the heart to be at zero, blow up to 100 in a nice animated fashion, and then shrink back down to zero. So let's go ahead and change the, um, the width constraint for this image view back down to zero so that we can't see it at first. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to the width constraint in the size inspector right here, go to the width constraint, and we're going to just set it to zero. And we're going to see that it shrinks away and we can no longer see it. So perfect. Also, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set the image to make sure that it's a heart. So just to make sure that it's a heart and that we didn't make a mistake, we didn't grab the wrong image. I'm just going to show you that there is a heart right there, but I'm setting it back to zero. All right, almost done. Let's jump back over to the photo cell. And now what we want to do is we want to add um, a, a double tap gesture. So I'm going to create another lazy variable that sets up our double tap gesture so that we can add it onto our, um, our image view. All right, so as you can see, I created a double tap recognizer, uh, a double tap recognizer right here, which is just a UI tap gesture recognizer. We're going to create the tap gesture recognizer with a target, which is going to be self and a selector. Now, the selector, we need to have a function which is essentially going to be called when it receives the number of taps required, which we're setting to two right here. And uh, let's go ahead and add that function in now. I'll just I'll just go ahead and add it down here. All right, so as you can see, I created a function called did double tap and make sure that it is exposed to um, the Objective-C runtime so that we can use it as a selector. Back up here in the double tap uh, recognizer, I'm gonna say hash selector and then did double tap like so. All right, so now we actually have the tap gesture, but it's not connected to anything. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put in our awake um, awake from nib or if you're doing this programmatically maybe you do it in the initializer or somewhere else that makes sense but since we're using storyboards we'll do it in the awake from nib all right so in the awake from nib um, uh, method all I'm doing is I'm grabbing I'm accessing the photo image view the one that's the big photo image the one that we would essentially be liking and we're adding our tap gesture recognizer right there to it 
So essentially, whenever the awake from nib is called, which is right before the um, image is displayed, essentially, uh, or yeah, or being rendered to the view or whatever, um, we're going to add a gesture recognizer to the image view. Whenever somebody taps or double taps on that image view, we're going to have our double tap recognizer call the did double tap. And the did double tap is actually where we want to um, use our animate light like, or, or like animator and call the animate function. So let's do that now. All right. And as you can see, it's just as simple as that. Just saying like animator dot animate and now we have our completion handler so we can put something in here we don't have to um, as of right now this is going to work exactly as we expect it to and if we go ahead and run it um, we should be able to see that we were able to create that that bouncing heart that gives us that um, that same impression from Instagram all right and then if we double tap over here oh it's not working and and it's good that I caught this um, it's not working right now because if we ha actually go back over to our storyboard you'll actually notice that image views by default are not user interaction enabled so you need to make sure you go over to the image view you need to uh, go to the attributes inspector and you need to, need to go to user interaction enabled in order for this to actually work so let's try that one more time all right, so now let's go ahead and try to double tap. And as you can see, it gives us that nice um, Instagram-like animation. Now, the only other thing that we're kind of missing right now is just the fact that after it finishes, we want to be able to just set that little heart saying that we did like it. And that's just uh, one extra line of code that we need to add in there. So let's jump back over to our photo cell. And remember that we have access to the like image view or not the, uh, the is liked image view, which is that little heart at the bottom. So all we're going to do is um, we're just going to say that that's no longer hidden. So let's make sure that we're going to follow better practices by setting this to weak self in. And we're going to say self dot is liked image view dot is hidden is hidden. And we're going to set that to false. So now it is going to be visible. So let's run that one more time and see what it looks like. All right. So now when we like it, it finishes animating and we see that it pops up right there. So whatever, any any other functionality that you want to add after um, a user did finish liking it, you know, you would just add it in that block of code. So that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for coming in. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more videos where I'm just kind of copying a, a simple little feature from one app and then bringing it over to you guys in tutorial form to see how you might do something like that. Um, if there's any way that I can improve my tutorials, please let me know. I'm always looking to make them better for you guys. And then last but not least, make sure if you want to help support the channel, you check out kilolocal.com and then you go to, um, you check out the memberships or you check out any of the courses that I have put out and see if they are a right fit for you. So that's going to be all for today, guys. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And make sure you keep going out there and keep coding passionately.